Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Serious Amiga. Now today we're on my Amiga 3000 that I've emulated in WinUAE and we're going to be looking at the world of desktop publishing. Now the reason why I'm on my Amiga 3000 is I think it's quite a fitting machine because this is most probably the kind of machine that desktop publishing would have been done on. Okay, so we're starting off with Professional Page, which is a very popular desktop publishing package for the Amiga. And I thought what we're going to do today is we're going to make a little newsletter. And really, this will be like a, uh, a tutorial in a way of how to use Professional Page as well. So we've got a blank canvas at the moment. We haven't got anything on the page at the moment. So if we go up to the top and we go to uh, Page, and then create page from default. Then it asks a couple of options. I'm going to choose A4 for the size of page that I want. Got the margins here and everything. So I know that I want to increase the margin a, a little bit at the top because I want to have a nice heading. And the number of columns that I want is uh, two, two columns. And we're going to have a gutter. A gutter is the space in between the columns and we just click on OK on that and there we go. So we've got two boxes here and they should be linked. If they're not linked, what you do is click on the first one, you click on this little icon here and then you choose the second one and then that, that links them. The way professional page works is everything works with boxes, okay? Boxes either contain graphics or boxes contain text. So you've got the little box tool here. And if you select that, it turns into a cursor and then you can start to draw boxes on the page. Now, one tip I'm going to do is go to preferences and then layout tools. And what I've got enabled is I've got the columns uh, enabled and I've also got snap to grid enabled so that it just keeps things a little bit more tidy and everything looks a little bit neater. Now I'm going to put a box at the top because this is where my heading is going to be for the newsletter. And I can change the typeface and the size of the text that's going to be in there. Now, in order to put text in here, we have to change to a different mode. Uh, we've got this icon here so this is the text input button so we click in there and then we want to change say for example the size of the font now you'll look at this and think oh there's only size 12 um, that's the only option actually you go to new and then you can type in a new option so 48 point and then if i type in say for example amiga news there we go um, we've got nice large font and if we go back to size yeah there, there's the 48 point that I selected so we've got a nice title here and it's spaced out really well now I can select text now the quirk with this is you can't select text going backwards it has always has to be left to right and once it's selected then you can start changing things so you can change it to bold if you want or outline like that and then uh, we've got these two columns here. So in here we've got a load of text. So what we can do is let's change the size back to 12 for that one. Let's make sure that that's, no, that hasn't done that. Maybe we have to select text and then change the size 12. There we go, yeah. And the style is not gonna be outline and the style is just gonna be plain. There we go. Now we can't quite see that under preferences, you've got magnification. At the moment, I'm at 50. If I go to 100, it zooms things in a little bit and you can see the text here. Now, to get around the page, you've got this kind of box here and you can left click and kind of basically move the window view around to see the whole of the page. So there we go. We've got a title, but we want to start putting some text into these boxes. Generally, with desktop publishing packages, what you tend to do, make all your text in a word processor first, 
and generally you have your text saved somewhere else. You can use the text tool to go in and start typing your text. So I've got to change the justification on this to left and then start typing. Oh, for some reason it didn't change. Justification left. There we go. Uh, this is a text. We, we can start typing in words um, into this, and that is one way of doing it. But a more efficient way, really, is that we'd import some text. Now, I've, I've made some text already. Just move this down a little bit so that we can see a good area of the screen. And you go to Preferences, Text Format, and you select the type of format you, that your text is in, so WordPerfect. Mine is in TransWrite, so I'm going to select that. Go to Project and then Import, Text. And then if I go to my Work Directory, I've got some text. If I select that and click OK, that's then going to put that into a buffer. Let's go to the text tool, select the cursor so that's in there, and then go edit and then paste. And then by magic, all of the text is being imported. And as you can see, it started to fill up the second column as well. So we can move around this page to see a little bit more. As you can see, yeah, that goes all the way down. And if I zoom out a little bit more, here's all our text. And that's the layout of our page. So not too bad. And I think it finished just about right on two columns. And there you go. There is our news article. I know it's very, very basic, um, but it's just a quick tour of this software. So we can now output this as postscript if we want. And we can say we want that to go to the parallel port. Now, what I need to do on the WinUAE side of things is I just need to make sure that on outputs, no, not output, sorry, IO, under printers, that I've got Microsoft print to PDF selected and I've got PostScript emulated. Go script required, so you need to install gross script if you're doing this. It's a free program. So uh, print to PDF, yeah, that's all enabled. So we're using the parallel port and then we're printing page one. It's the final copy of it and it's black and white, it's totally fine. And then let's choose OK. Send in this, OK. So it's currently printing, it's going through all the boxes and then hopefully, ah, there we go. So now we can save that. I'm just going to save it to my desktop and I'm going to put newsletter. And this is the PDF copy that we have now got out of the Amiga via PostScript. As you can see, the text is nice and clear. Uh, we've got the formatting from the Amiga news at the top. And then we've got our article down here. It's a great way to use the Amiga for uh, desktop publishing. You can get into a lot more detail in this. I've literally done this very quickly. You can then use WinUAE to export this out into other programs that are more modern and use it however you want. Maybe you want to create a newsletter just using the Amiga. So that is professional page. Now we're going to move on to a slightly different product. So the next one we're going to have a look at is PageStream. Now PageStream is a little bit later on in the Amiga's life. This was produced in 1996, but uh, again, we can select our size. So I'm going to choose A4 again. We're working in inches. And again, you can see here, we can choose our columns and the gutter size and everything here so if i click ok yeah we've got our layout of the page here and you can see that the menu system is slightly different here 
it's it's using a more version a more modern version of, of workbench as well i'm running this in in workbench 3.2 what we can do is under the tools we've got a column tool here we can choose to create a column here and then if we choose that we say uh, i double click on this and then i say two columns we're gutter of that click OK and there we go look it's it's then produced that uh, again we've got the text tool this time it's just an A and then we can start typing in text into the document or we can then just insert text got some lorem ipsum there insert and there you go it fills in the text now you can draw shapes onto here as well if you wanted any shapes and this snaps to a grid as well the column we could draw a column this is just for our title to change font sizes everything's down the bottom here so this is a little bit uh different so we can change the size down the bottom here to 48 and then type in Amiga news again. I don't think that's changed. I'll have to select it. Yeah, I have to select it and then increase the font size now. Um, there we go. I think well, 30 will do with that one. We can choose a different font as well if we want. There we go. Page stream, I think might be a little bit easier. If you do want to explore desktop publishing, page stream might be the easier option for you. Professional page was used a lot as well. But, uh, as well as page stream. These were the two main uh, contenders, I think, in desktop publishing. That's a quick look at page stream three, and that is it for today. Thank you for watching. If there's a type of serious application that you want to see on the Miga, don't forget to leave a comment uh, down in the video, and I will look into that. We've got a load more videos to come, so don't worry. Remember to subscribe to carry on watching all of these and I hope you have a fantastic day. See you everybody.